everybody and welcome back to Time to Go. Bob here and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at three watches that have come in from Aaron from the OFD channel. The watches that we're going to be looking at are the Deep Blue ProTac. This is a 1000 meter dive watch. I'm going to be doing a full review of that one followed by just a quick look of the AV8 Hawker Hunter and the Ballast Trafalgar. Now these last two watches have been making the rounds. Aaron has done a review. Chris Marshall has done a review of these as well as Scott from Watches Galore. So I'm going to leave a link to all of their channels below. So let's spin the camera around. We'll take a closer look at the watches. All right, guys, so we're going to start off with the Deep Blue ProTac. Beside the Deep Blue, you'll see we have the Aviate and the Ballast. We'll get to those in just a second. And in the background over here, you'll see the Deep Blue travel case that the watch comes in, which is a nice little bonus. Also, we have the original Deep Blue rubber strap. It's a pretty good quality strap, has pretty solid hard hardware as well. Now, the strap that Aaron has this watch currently paired with is a Blue Shark NATO and I'm really glad he's done this. I've been interested in uh, placing an order for a couple of NATOs through them but I've never actually handled one until now and I do have to say that it is quite a nice quality NATO strap. Uh, much like the rubber strap that comes with the Deep Blue, it has very solid hardware and uh, really comfortable on wrist. So as far as the watch itself goes, just a few specs that I want to get out of the way here. So we are looking at a pretty large watch. This is a 46 millimeter case width. The lug to lug is 50 millimeters. Lug width is 22 millimeters and we're looking at about a 13 and a half millimeter case case thickness. Now the crystal here is a sapphire crystal. We have a crazy 1000 meter water resistant and to assist in that the case back on this watch actually is triple sealed as well as the screw down crown is double sealed. Now I've seen a lot of uh, deep blue watches with pretty wild dials and this one is no exception. The dial here is a metallic yellow dial with a sunburst effect. When you first see this thing it definitely grabs your attention. At uh, 3 o'clock we have the day date function. Now the loom if I'm not mistaken is super luminova and we'll just hit the lights now so you guys can check that out. And as you guys can see here, the loom kind of speaks for itself. It's very bright and bold. I have absolutely no complaints when it comes to the loom on this watch. The bezel here is a unidirectional bezel. It has an aluminum insert. Kind of reminds me of some of the Citizen Diver bezels with just the way there's that spacing between the grips. It is very easy to grip and turn and I really like that snappy bezel action. There is a little bit of play in this thing but as far as alignment goes, if I just get it back to 12 o'clock here, the alignment is pretty much bang on on this thing. The case here has a matte finish. Now, I can't quite tell if this is bead blasted or just very finely brushed, but either way, the finish work is nicely done. The case you'll see from the side profile here sort of rounds out and down towards the case back where it kind of ends abruptly with this sharp edge. Now, I thought for sure that that would dig into the wrist, but not true, I've been wearing it for a few days now and you don't notice it on wrist at all. Now on the other side of the case, we have, first of all, the helium escape valve uh, up here, which is very easy to unscrew and screw back in, although I can't imagine ever needing to use that, but it does look cool though. The crown here is protected by this really neat crown guard that wraps up and over top of the crown and I would have kind of suspected that that would make this hard to manipulate. The crown though is very easy to open and close using even gloves and if we pull the crown out the full distance you'll see that this is a hackable movement. This is a Seiko Quartz. Now on the back side of the watch, I'll just take the strap off here and show you guys. We have some nice etch work. We have a wave pattern with a little diver guy there. And on the perimeter of the image, we also have some specs on the watch. So let's uh, just throw it on wrist for a quick second for you guys. Okay, so 
on wrist, this watch definitely has a certain flashiness to it, especially with that yellow dial, and I quite like it. It's nice to have something to mix it up every once in a while in the collection. Now, this is my first time actually handling a deep blue watch, and I've had my eye on a couple of models, and with the solid build quality here, it gives me the confidence to go out and pick one up of my own. So you guys can definitely expect to see more from deep blue on the channel in the future so overall i think for this price point this is a really cool watch and i've really enjoyed my time with it so the next watch we are taking a look at here is the ballast trafalgar and what's interesting about this watch is how you operate the movement as opposed to operating it with your typical crown we operate the movement on this watch with the bezel. So if I unscrew this canteen style crown cover here, there is actually a button underneath of it. So in its first position, you are able to wind the movement using the bezel. If we push the button to the next position, we can change the date. And in the last position, we can adjust the time. So there's a second button here, which you push, which brings us back to the original position. And we'll just put the crown cover back on. If we flip the watch over, you'll see through the case back, we have a decorated Miyota movement and a pretty nice looking watch. So let me just pop it on for a second for you guys. So on wrist, this thing is definitely a little on the beefy side. It comes in at 46.5 millimeters as far as the case width goes. Now, the leather strap that comes with this watch is a really nice quality leather. You can see that the clasp, it's quite heavy duty and has the submarine engraved onto it. And one bonus with this strap as well, it does come with quick release spring bars, which is nice for fast strap changes. So the one thing for me with this particular model is I'm not a huge into rose gold, but I will say that Ballast does have some other options color wise for the uh, their Trafalgar line. Last but not least, we have the Hawker Hunter by AV8. Now, this is a quartz chronograph, and along with the rest of the AV8 lineup, they are all very heavily inspired by the aviation world. The subdials here on this watch, you can see that they're going for that instrument panel of a plane, and they've done a quite a nice job of that. So, as far as the subdials go here, at three o'clock, we have a 24 hour clock or military time. At at six, we are looking at the seconds counter for the chronograph function. Then at 10 o'clock, what's really interesting to me is we have the minutes counter, but after 10 minutes, it snaps back to zero, which is kind of cool. Now, the other kind of nice touch that they've done here is the hands are skeletonized, which give this watch complete legibility when using the chronograph function, no matter what time of day we're at. So kind of cool. On the back side, we have have the AV8 uh, emblem and etched as well as some other information on the watch and much like the ballast we also have a quite a high quality leather strap so, all right so the hawker hunter here definitely has an interesting design i typically shy away from square watches but i kind of like how this one looks on wrist now there are quite a few color combinations for this watch and if you go on their website there is a fully blacked out version as well as a black with blue highlights that i think are just awesome both this watch as well as the ballast do have a Good build quality. They're, they're both solid feeling watches, so I'm really happy with both of them. So let's spin the camera around. We'll wrap up today's video. All right, guys, so a big thank you to Aaron from the OFD channel. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below, as well as a link to Scott from Watches Galore, as well as Chris Marshall. All three great channels. Appreciate you stopping by, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.